Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and today I'm going to show you how you can use ultrasound to identify pneumoperitoneum or free air in the abdomen. The best probe for this is going to be your linear transducer. It's going to give you the highest resolution image, but the curvilinear transducer can work as well. As far as where to place the probe on the abdomen, the most anterior part of the abdomen on this patient about right there would probably be the first place that I'll look, but you can look all over. Some people actually talk about placing the patient in the left lateral decubitus to look right above the liver. I find that that is a little cumbersome sometimes, and so I just have them lay on their backs or however it is that they are when I see them and scan just the most anterior part of their abdominal cavity. This examination is all about the EPSS, not the heart EPSS or E-point septal separation. We are going to talk about the enhanced peritoneal stripe sign. So this is a non-enhanced peritoneal stripe. This is some subcutaneous tissue over here, and this is the peritoneal lining. And then we have a bunch of bowel underneath it. We can actually see a little bit of definition of the bowel itself. Here is another example. This is the peritoneal stripe, so it's this kind of white stuff right here. And over here, we see bowel. This bowel can have some reverberation artifacts in it, some B lines, maybe a little A line down here. This is what not free air looks like. Now this, I'm gonna pause it right here. This is a combination of free air and air just within the bowel. So this right here, this is the peritoneal stripe right underneath this subcutaneous tissue right above the bowel. You can see that right here, right starting right here, we can see an enhanced peritoneal stripe. It's brighter than what's next to it. And we have some reverberation artifacts, some A-lines right, right there, right there. Now contrast that, which is free air, to this down here. We can actually see a normal peritoneal stripe, and actually this up here is the bowel wall, and we're seeing some air within the bowel lumen. This is free air. This is air that is not free. It's inside the lumen. Now, occasionally, you can get small, tiny little air bubbles like you see here. See these little guys right here? These little foci of little hyperechoic material here. These are tiny individual air bubbles that are up against the peritoneal lining. That is indicative of very small bubbles of free fluid. But what is probably an easier thing to find is this thing over here, this EPSS, or Enhanced Peritoneal Stripe Sign. Here is another image. We have normal normal bowel down here, and then we have a normal peritoneal stripe here with an enhanced peritoneal stripe up here with A-line, A-line, A-line. I know we think of A-lines just being present in the lung, but remember that A-lines are present anytime you have a uniform surface of air on basically anything. So you have a uniform layer of air here, you're going to get A-line, you're going to get an A-line. You can use the curvilinear transducer, although it's probably not my favorite and probably not the best. You can use it to sometimes get a little bit of a bird's eye view. Here we have air within the bowel. See, it's below the peritoneal stripe right there. So this is not free air. This is the peritoneal stripe. And then right here, we start to see an enhanced peritoneal stripe with some A-lines behind it. This is free air. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes you can place the patient in the left lateral decubitus, so the liver side up, and look over the liver. Some people have talked about using that to help you find that extra perineal free air. This is a peritoneal lining right here, non-enhanced. This is an enhanced peritoneal lining right here with some reverberation or artifact underneath it. Here's that same image zoomed in. We have a peritoneum here, normal peritoneal stripe. This is an enhanced peritoneal stripe here with this reverberation or artifact underneath. Now, it's important to understand what a false positive enhanced peritoneal stripe looks like. So if we look at this right here, this is pretty bright and it's pretty close to the surface. But if you see any kind of hypoechoic layering above what you think is the peritoneum, it turns out that that is not an enhanced peritoneal stripe. This is actually air within the bowel lumen, and this is probably bowel wall right here. So how much air needs to be present before you detect it? Remember that image earlier where I showed you those tiny little foci right there? There have been studies that have been able to identify just those tiny little air bubbles in essentially experimental models. But in real life, it, you probably need to have a little more air than just single bubbles. Probably the best study we have on this is one on beagles where they included 282 beagles that had instilled various amounts of air into their belly. And they found that 0.2 mLs had uh, good sensitivity and specificity. It was in the high 80s, both sensitivity and specificity. It's not perfect, but it is better than anything else we have in the bedside, including our physical exam, our stethoscope, and our x-ray. 
CT scan is definitely the gold standard, but we may find ourselves in scenarios where we can't get one right away or we want to diagnose them fast. And in this case, the ultrasound definitely comes in handy. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog.5minutesono.com slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in the little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want these podcasts sent directly to your smart devices, just type in 5-Minute Sono and whatever podcasting service you use, type in 5-Minute Sono. Leave me a rating and review. I always love those. And subscribe.